Hey guys, Greg here from Lens Pro to Go, and in this video, we're going to be covering how to set up the Ari Alexa Mini in a bunch of different shooting situations. We're going to do a studio setup, we're going to do a slider slash dolly track, we'll have a shoulder mount, and then also a handheld easy rig setup. If you haven't checked out part one and two where we cover the camera and the menus, definitely go and check those ones out. Without further ado, let's jump right into this first setup. In this first setup, we're going to be doing a studio build. So this is really good if you're gonna be doing it on like a tripod and you're gonna have a lot of lockdown shots in-house studio or out in location shooting on tripods. We're starting with the uh, DV12 Sackler tripod here. And we really like this tripod because it just gives you some awesome flexibility. You get this sliding pan head to adjust your weight. We also have some really good resistance so that heavy cameras like this, you can put them wherever you want and they're gonna stay. And then you also have a incredible pan. If you turn off all of the resistance, this camera will just spin around on its own. There's like no friction there. So if you wanna do some quick movements, it's really great for that. Coming up off that, we have the wooden camera safety dovetail plate, and then we have the unified wooden camera cage on the Ari Alexa Mini. This is really great because it gives you some NATO rails, a ton of mounting points, and you can also adjust the weight again. If this slide isn't enough for you, you can really move the camera around depending on how you build this rig out. On the top, we have the wooden camera NATO rail and the top handle. Uh, this also gives you some more additional points. You get a 15 millimeter rod adapter, so if you wanna put a rod in there and have an accessory on it. And then you can also adjust this top handle to pick it up where the weight is centered. So I can move it to the side like this if the camera's been tilting a little bit to the left and now it's gonna be centered when I'm picking it up and down. This will be great when we do the easy rig and the handheld setup. In front of that, we have the UVF wooden camera viewfinder monitor mount. And we really like this one over the Ari one that comes with it because you get a little more flexibility, you get a lot more range in it, and it's just super easy to use and makes adjusting the viewfinder really quick. Attached to that, we obviously have the Ari Alexa mini viewfinder, and this is where you're gonna be running through all your menus and controlling your start stop and all your other settings. Definitely check out part two where we cover the menus if you're interested in learning more about that. Right below that, we have the PL mount on the Mini currently. You can do an EF mount if you're gonna be using Canon glass, uh, but we have the PL mount with the Lomo 50 millimeter square front anamorphic lens. So you can see you got the square front there and it's an anamorphic. In front of that, we have the wooden camera UMB1 matte box on 15 millimeter rails. This is a great matte box. Uh, you get some more mounting points just like you do with the cage, but you don't necessarily need it for this setup. I'm using a vintage anamorphic lens and one of the great characteristics of this is that they flare a lot. So not having a matte box and letting all of that light come in is really gonna give it that character and we want those lens flares. So we don't wanna be blocking them off with a matte box. Also the Alexa Mini has built in NDs so we don't need to be doing drop in ND filters if we're shooting outdoors. So this is definitely an optional thing if you're gonna be going with this setup. On the other side, we have the Cinevate Duris Follow Focus. Um, this is a great follow focus, it goes on just one rail and it's got this quick release so you can drop it off, do any adjustments to your lens that you want, bring it right back up, pop it on, lock it down, and you're ready to roll. Next what we've attached is the wooden camera A box going into the audio port here. This gives you two XLRs which you can't really see, uh, but there's two XLRs in there. They aren't phantom power so you need to have a line level coming into the camera. Right above that, we have the Teradek Bolt 500, and this is gonna be sending a signal out to another monitor for, say, a client or producer or director or somebody that doesn't need to be right on the camera. So this is really good to not be tethered to anything that you don't need to be. And lastly for monitoring, we have a Israeli arm going down to a 502 monitor. If you want a bigger monitor or you're gonna be shooting outside, I would recommend going with the 702 monitor, uh, which I'll also put a link to in the description so you can check that out. Uh, this is a really good monitor, you get some awesome tools, really great focus peaking so you can have your AC pull focus and nail it all the time. Spinning around to the back of the camera, we have the wooden camera D-Box, which gives you a bunch of accessory ports. You get some 24 volt and 12 volt accessory ports, as well as power in if you wanna plug it into a wall. And then we have an Anton Bauer 90 watt hour battery. Now having the 90 watt hour battery is super important because you can't fly with anything over that. And that's pretty much the studio setup. Now let's jump over and we'll see what we swap around and change out for the uh, slider or dolly track. Okay, so here we are with our 
dolly track slider setup. Uh, and we are using the Kessler shuttle dolly. We have this on two CT414 tripods. On either side, you can't see them because they're right out of frame. And then we have the Kessler rail mounts. And then we just have some standard speed rail that you can go and you can pick up at any hardware store. On top of that, we have the carriage itself. Um, and this thing's pretty amazing. It's incredibly smooth. And the great thing about this is that you can run it as long as you have speed rail. So you could get a 20 foot run of speed rail and you could have that length instead of being stuck on a slider where you're either at three foot or five foot or whatever length slider you have. Going into the shuttle dolly, we have the 509 HD Manfrotto tripod head. And this is a 100 millimeter ball mount and that gives you some really good options for leveling out the uh, tripod head so you don't have to get the carriage perfectly level. On top of that, it's pretty much the same. It's a lot of the same features. We have the safety dovetail plate just to balance the weight back and forth because you don't get a lot of movement on this slide. And everything else is pretty much the same until you flip around to the other side. We've added the Hocus Axis One wireless follow focus. And this is so your AC doesn't have to be right on camera. You could stick with the same studio setup and use the Cinevate, but I just like having as little hands on the camera as possible especially when you're trying to do slide moves or any type of movement that you don't want it to be interfered with somebody else bumping the camera. And we've also mounted the Axis One transmitter right up top here, just with some Velcro to stick right on top. You'll also notice that we removed the Israeli arm and the 502 monitor. We just ran a long five foot SDI. You could also do it through the Teradek if you don't want to be tethered to anything. And we've just mounted it to the Kessler end rails here. And this is where your first AC is gonna be pulling focus from. So you can see on the lens there, how it's pulling focus and they can see all their stuff from the monitor here. Everything else is pretty much the same. Because this is pretty much a tripod setup, you just have the option to slide in a horizontal or um, Z axis move. And that's it for the dolly slider setup. Uh, let's jump into the shoulder mount and we'll show you how we get that one set up. So here we have our shoulder rig. And again, it's pretty similar to the last two setups that we showed. We still have the same map box, same lens, same battery pack, all of that stuff. The one thing we did change out is the whole base plate system. So now we're using the wooden camera VCT tripod plate and the shoulder mount. And we have longer rails in so that they pass through and then we can add on our um, hand grips. So we have our rosette arms. Um, on this one, we have an extension just so you're in a little more comfortable position instead of having everything off to your right side or your left side, you're sort of centered. Um, and then on the other side, with the other wooden hand grip, we have a start-stop record trigger. So we can start and stop, and that cable is just running up into the 24-volt uh, accessory port on the D-Box from wooden camera. Uh, the other thing is we've went completely wireless now with our AC. So we have the wireless follow focus, and now we're gonna be using the Teradek to send signal to our AC instead of to a director's monitor or producer or something like that. So they can be completely hands-off uh, and pulling focus. And then we've moved the viewfinder into a good eye-level position for when it's on your shoulder. So if I just pop this off, Throw it on your shoulder like that, and then you have your AC wirelessly pulling focus from over here. These grips are really nice, and you can really go a long time with them. They're much better than like the rubber or plastic grips that you can get on some of the other models. And this is a really great setup too, having the VCT plate. If you're gonna be going from studio to handheld a lot, you just throw it on here. Now you have a nice tripod setup, and then you can throw it on your shoulder and you're ready to roll uh, with wireless feeds and follow focus. That's it for uh, this setup. Now let's go check out the Easy Rig and we'll show you how you strip this thing down and get it super light and compact and ready to shoot for handheld. And here we are with our last setup, the Easy Rig. Um, this is our handheld setup. And what we've got is we've got the Easy Rig 2.5 going down to the NATO handle. So what we've done is we've stripped it down. We only have one rail instead of both rails. We have no map box. Again, I'm with the Loma, so I don't really need it. If you do have like a normal size cine lens, like a 114 millimeter front, you can do a zip box, which is a super lightweight one that just zips on the front. Uh, if you check out the red rigging video, you can see it in there. 
We've also taken off the viewfinder, as you can see, and we've just swapped it out for a 502 monitor. Uh, you won't be able to control it this way, so if you're just a one-man band and you're going to be controlling everything, you might have to leave the viewfinder on. Uh, but you can hook it up to the Wi-Fi app, and then you can just run everything through that and do all your control and settings, or you can have your AC do that. And then we have another one going out through the Teradek to your AC, who's going to be pulling focus. So everything's pretty much wireless. This is really just like, so you frame up the shots, start and stop record, and then everything else is done by your AC. And that's all I have for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll also be linking to all of the different setups that we have in the description, uh, so you can check those out and see exactly which pieces of gear that we used. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We have a lot more stuff like this coming out. Also, don't forget to head on over to LensProtigo.com where we rent out all of this gear. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.